Okay, welcome back to the AR-15 barrel series. We have another chrome-lined duty style or combat style barrel today. This one is from Centurion Arms, and it was kindly loaned to the channel by a generous subscriber. So we will go over the specs, get a good look at things on the bench, and then take it to the range and see how it does. But first, let me introduce the sponsor for this video. Today's video sponsor is Jack Wolf Knives. Jack Wolf Knives is based right here in Phoenix, Arizona. They offer a variety of high quality everyday carry pocket knives. They're best known for taking timeless knife designs and producing them with modern materials and methods. Whether out in the field or at a nice dinner, Jack Wolf has the option for you. So if you're looking for an heirloom quality knife to add to your collection, check out Jack Wolf Knives on the web or Instagram. Available for purchase at their authorized dealers worldwide. And don't forget to visit his booth at CanCon 2025 on April 10th to 12th at the Ben Avery range in Phoenix. All right, so thank you to the subscriber for supplying the barrel for the video. This barrel was loaned to me in brand new, never fired condition and was purchased in November of 2020. I'm not sure the manufacturing date for this barrel since I can't find the date code anywhere on it. But if you have an idea of when this barrel was manufactured, drop it in the comments below. Anyway, it's a 14.7 inch cold hammer forged chrome line barrel. And I believe it has a 5.56 nano chamber and 1.7 twist, but that doesn't seem to be marked anywhere on the barrel either. The outside of the barrel is phosphate coated and the muzzle has standard half by 28 threads. The crown is recessed a bit and also has a chamfer on it, which I think looks pretty neat. The barrel also has a carbon link gas system with a 750 thousandths gas block journal that does not have a dimple drilled for a gas block set screw. And the gas port measures 68 thousandths, which is on the larger side for a 14.7 carbine barrel. So we'll see how that goes during the shooting segment. The barrel has a government style profile and weighs in at a little over one and a half pounds which I would say puts it somewhere between a lightweight and midweight barrel. And the feed ramps on the barrel extension are also chamfered, which I like to see. All right, making our way to the bench, the barrel extension measured 0 0.99930, which pushes somewhere in the middle compared to the other barrel extensions I measured so far. And the gas block journal measured right on the money, so that was pretty cool to see. Moving on to the gauges, here is the throat erosion gauge, and the Centurion measured between a 1 and 2 on this gauge, which is what I would expect from a new barrel. And next we have a chamber gauge to see if the chamber and throat is at least minimum size. And this barrel passes. Next, we'll check headspace starting with a 556 minimum headspace gauge and a new JP bolt. And the barrel passes. And here's a 223 no-go gauge. And the bolt is able to close on the gauge. So the barrel fails this gauge with this bolt. So we will continue to a 223 field gauge. And this bolt is not able to close on the field gauge. Okay, so since this barrel failed the no-go gauge with the JP bolt, but passed the field gauge, it's still well below the maximum headspace specification for a 5.56 nano chamber. However, some people might be concerned about the barrel failing a no-go gauge. Personally, I'd prefer that a new barrel not fail a no-go gauge, but it's not necessarily a deal breaker or a major concern for me. Anyway, let's get back to it with the bore scope. All right, so I'm using a bore scope that was provided by Teslong. It's their fold and focus model, which is available on their website, and you can get 10% off with my affiliate code, PM2025, if you're interested. And also a quick note about the bore scope footage. This was done after I got done shooting the groups and cleaning the barrel. Normally, I would prefer to take the bore scope footage before shooting the groups, but this is just how it worked out this time. Anyway, starting at the chamber, there isn't a whole lot to look at here. There are what look to be some light machining marks or something along the chamber walls, but they don't look too serious. At least to me they don't. And moving up, here's the neck portion of the chamber. And we'll take a bit of a spin around here to see what we can see. And again, nothing is really jumping out at me as being out of place or anything. Next, here's the throat, and we have a couple things to look at here. First, we'll take a quick look at the start of the rifling, which doesn't look very consistent to me. The rifling starts in different places. Also, if you look at the right edge of the lands of the rifling where the lead was cut, the rifling looks a bit jagged or rough. Some spots look a little bit worse than others, but none of them look really good. And here's a side-by-side -side with the Noveski rival barrel that I looked at a while ago. To me, the lead on the Noveski looks a lot cleaner. It just doesn't have the roughness or jagged edges that the Centurion has on the right side of the, of the lands. The Noveski just looks the way that I would expect it to. And the Centurion looks a little bit different. And here's another side-by-side -side with the Hodge barrel that I looked at a few weeks ago. And the way the throat was cut looks pretty similar between the two of them. There is a bit of unevenness in the throat, and also the rough edges on the right side of the rifle lane on both barrels. So, of course, we'll see how much of an effect this may or may not have when we shoot the groups, but it doesn't look that great. Although the Hodge ended up shooting pretty good in that video. So, we'll see how things turn out with the Centurion. Anyway, moving forward a bit, here is a look at the gas port. And again, this is after about 100 rounds or so. 
And here's a look at the rifle lane just past the gas port. We'll take a spin around here to get a good look at all the lands and grooves. Everything looks pretty good up here, at least in my eyes it does. I don't see anything here that I would be concerned about. And here's a look at the crown. To me, this doesn't look like the cleanest cut on the crown. The cuts for the chamfer don't really look clean either, but I'm not really concerned about that. The leading edge of the crown just doesn't really look to be that clean of a cut. To my eyes, there just looks to be some irregularity or roughness to it. It's just not as smooth as I would have expected it to be. And there's one spot in particular that definitely doesn't look as smooth as I would expect it to. But you guys can let me know what you think in the comments. Does this cut for the crown look smooth to you, or are you seeing what I'm seeing where it just looks a little bit rough? Anyway, next we'll go over the shooting setup and then head to the range. The barrel was fit into an upper receiver. The threads were greased and the barrel nut was torqued to the manufacturer's torque specification. The handguard was fitted with a 3 inch front bag rider. The stock was supported by a rear bag. An A5 buffer system was used with an A5 dash yield buffer and Sprenco green spring. Trigger is a Geisley Super Dynamic 3 gun. The bore was fouled with a few rounds before starting the first group. Scope is a Vortex Viper 6.5 to 20 by 44 with rings torqued to 15 inch pounds. Magnification was set to 20, and parallax was set using a head nod test. A Garmin Zero C1 Pro chronograph was used to collect velocity data. A Mantis X10 Elite was mounted to the front of the handguard to keep track of rifle stability and detect any possible shooter-induced flyers. Groups were measured using the Ballistic X app. Each group is 30 shots fired consecutively over about four minutes. This simulates a match or a practical type scenario where the barrel will get some heat into it. Between each group, I used a chamber chiller and leaf blower for cool down. Distance was 100 yards. Point of aim was a small circle at the bottom of the target. Point of impact was a few inches higher to preserve the aiming point. Wind was monitored with ribbon, and each 30 shot group took about four minutes to shoot and was edited down to about 15 seconds. Okay, starting off with the bulk FMJ load, we have PMC XTAC M855. Not exactly known for world-class accuracy, but I find it interesting to see how these FMJ loads do, but I usually don't exactly expect a whole lot out of it. Anyway, recoil felt a little much from the Centurion. Not that it wasn't manageable, but it was more than I was expecting. Both chronos worked, the Mantis missed one shot, and the shooting felt fine on my end. So, we will finish up the group and then take a closer look. Alright, so the PMC XTAC 62 grain M855 had, has an advertised velocity of 2920 out of a 20 inch barrel, and I got 2768 feet per second out of this 14.7 inch barrel, which gives us 1055 foot pounds of muzzle energy, which isn't too bad, and we ended up with a slightly higher velocity standard deviation of 27 feet per second. The velocity extreme spread was 101 feet per second, with shot 21 being the slowest and shot 15 being the fastest. The rifle stability average looked fine at 99.5, although I did have three shots below 99.0, but those all ended up landing pretty close to the center anyway, so I'm not too worried about those. The group looks fairly round, with shot 8 kind of going off into space over there on the right. The data looks fine on that shot, and it felt fun on my end, so I'm not sure what happened there. Anyway, we ended up with a group size of 3.964 MOA, with a mean radius of 0.967 MOA. And if you're new here, here's a quick primer on my AZ score. So AZ is an acronym that stands for A-Zone Equivalence Distance, and it basically gives you the maximum distance where the calculated group size would still fit into a USPCA A-Zone, which is 5.91 inches wide. The reason why I use this score is because it's just a little bit easier for me to make sense of things compared to looking at the raw mean radius numbers. Anyway, getting back to it, the Centurion shooting PMC M855 comes in 11th place out of 16 on the low tier ammo leaderboard with an AZ score of 146 yards, which isn't really too bad. You can see that there is a pretty good amount of barrels between the 140 to 160 yard range. So there is certainly room for improvement, but uh, I think it did fine for a Cold Hammer Forge uh, Chrome Line Combat Oriented Barrel. But anyway, let's move ahead to the next group. Hey guys, if you've been enjoying the Air 15 Barrel Series and want to help keep it going, consider supporting the channel by becoming a patron on Patreon or by joining the channel as a member right here on YouTube. It will help me to buy more ammo and equipment so that I can make more content like this. Links are down below. Thanks. Okay, so the mid-tier ammo for this barrel is the AAC 75 grain BTHP match. I don't really have much experience with this ammo, but the 75s and 77s from AAC seem like a pretty popular choice. So, we'll see how it goes. Anyway, the wind was calm, both Chronos and the Mantis picked up every shot, which is always nice when that happens. And the recoil felt pretty stout again, and the brass was ejecting pretty far forward with the setup. Shooting felt fine on my end, so we will finish up the group and then take a closer look. Alright, so the AAC 75 grain boat tail hollow points have an advertised velocity of 2700 feet per second out of a 20 inch barrel, and I got 2522 out of the Centurion, which gives us 1059 foot pounds of muzzle energy, which isn't too bad again, and the standard deviation looked pretty decent at 20 feet per second. The velocity extreme spread was 87 feet per second, with shot 18 being the slowest and shot 
11 being the fastest. Rifle stability average looked fine at 99.6 with no shots falling below 99.0. And I would say the groove looks fairly well distributed with uh, nothing too out of whack. There are a few more shots out on the left than there are on the right, but I think we'll be okay. The group size ended up at 2.996 MOA with main radius of 0.869 MOA. And if we take a look at the mid-tier ammo leaderboard, the Centurion comes in 8th place out of 13 groups on this leaderboard with an AZ score of 162 yards. So again, kind of middle of the pack or so. Not great, not bad either. Anyway, let's see what we get with this last group. Okay, so here is the new standardized load for now. And again, the recoil from the Centurion had a bit more punch to it than I was expecting. And the brass is continuing to eject forward with the Razor Core. I also had a small issue with the Mantis. It didn't record the first two shots, so I'm not really sure what happened there. But anyway, everything else went fine. Both Chronos recorded every shot, the wind was calm, and the shooting felt good on my end. So, we will finish up the group and then take a closer look. Alright, so with the IMI 77 grain Razor Core, we had an advertised velocity of 2,750 feet per second out of a 20 inch barrel. And I got 2541 out of this 147 which gives us 1,104 foot-pounds of muzzle energy, which is on the higher side of things for a 14.7. And the standard deviation looked okay at 23 feet per second. The velocity extreme spread was 85 feet per second, with shot 1 being the slowest and shot 20 being the fastest. The rifle stability average looked fine at 99.6, with the worst shots being at 99.2, so I think we're good there. And the group mostly looks good, with shots 2 and 20 being a little further out from the rest. Not sure how they got there, but... That's where they landed. Anyway, group size ended up being 2.939 MOA with a mean radius of 0.697 MOA. And we'll start out with the 77 grain Sierra Match King factory load leaderboard. So, all these groups were shot with a 77 grain Sierra Match King bullet, but they may have been loaded a little bit differently. Anyway, the Centurion comes in 10th place out of 11 groups with an AZ score of 202 yards. So, the Centurion is struggling a little bit on this leaderboard. And if you look at the leaderboard for all the groups shot with the same ammo, the IMI Razor Core, the Centurion is third place out of three barrels. So, the Centurion is last place with an AZ score of 202, versus the CLE Bartline with an AZ score of 262 yards. And here is a side-by-side -side to see what those two groups look like next to each other. Okay, so here is a look at the overall result from the Centurion. The IMI group did best by a decent amount, with an AZ score of 202 yards, compared to the AAC 75 grain, with an AZ score of 162 yards. And after that was the PMC M855, with an AZ score of 146 yards. The Razor Core also had the most muzzle energy, at just over 1,100 foot-pounds, and the standard deviations weren't too terribly far away from one another. And looking ahead, I'm hoping to have a little bit of a different video for the next one. I still have plenty more in the Air 15 Barrel series yet to come, but I have one kind of funnish video that I'll probably come out with next. And after that, I have another series that I'd like to get going on. But both of those will take a little bit of editing, so hopefully they don't take too long. And I hope they'll be worth it. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Later.